tonight on Comfort Level Podcast. Three humans, one guest, try to read. With Sam, Maddie, Brandon, and our special guest. No one. Join us tonight. We got a good guest. At 12 p.m. As we figure out, am I the asshole? No, I ruined it by saying it. It was cool sure. and stereo. Yeah, it, it, yeah. So, am I the asshole for beating my parents to the chase and moving out in the middle of the night? No. No. Yeah, no. Whatever Brandon said. Oh, then I agree with Brandon. I agree with Brandon because a lot of people in the comments are like, Brandon said the right thing. He's like the heart of the show and like saying all the good things. So now, whatever. Because that's true. Says, <laughs> I'm, I'm on never board with what Brandon Because that's true. That? I've they never love, seen that. They're like, you're like making people. The past cry. few episodes. I didn't see that one. <laughs> no, the episode I wasn't in because you guys did it without Residia. There was something you had said in some comments. People in the comments were like, I almost cried from what Brandon said. And I'm like, no one's ever said that. <laughs> people, I usually make people cry like out of anger. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like you frustrate but she them. She made them so happy they almost cried. So I'm like, <laughs> I guess I gotta get like my cousin. <laughs> so you're now my role model. So now this is gonna be a new Sam <laughs> turning over a new leaf. <laughs> no. I'm changing. <laughs> Like they've never cried in, no, in no tears been, of joy. It's always anger and angst. Always anger. And just like so angry that tears are just angry <laughs> tears flowing. Why would he say that? I loved him so much. Why would he <laughs> Angry tears. No more. Nah. My cousin. He makes them cry like a store. Hey. Baby, baby. Heart of the show. Uh -huh. Emotions. We're Merry. okay. Cut out the Merry Christmas. <laughs> we can't have that. <laughs> Merry yeah, Christmas. Merry Christmas. I was a crip. <laughs> no. Chris Kringle's a crip. No, Sam, stop. <laughs> I couldn't stop. do it for a minute. <laughs> I tried to Sit change on I'm the already, block. I've already said something bad. <laughs> and that's on me. <laughs> That's on me. <laughs> Am I the asshole for beating my parents to the chase and moving out in the middle of the night? I, 18 female, overheard conversations with my mom and my dad, 39 female and 40 male, about how they planned to kick me out shortly after my 18th birthday. The way they were talking about it seemed like they were dead serious and the way they brought it up multiple times made it seem like they were going to kick me out too. So I decided that I wouldn't give them the chance to kick me out and made plans with my friend Riley, 17 female, to stay at her place until I graduated and moved into a college dorm or had an apartment of my own. Riley's parents were horrified by the thought my parents would kick me out at the second that I turned 18 wow. and agreed to let me stay at their place as long as I graduated high school. Oh, so Riley wasn't on her own. Mm -mm. Okay, I was like... <laughs> How are you horrified? Because I'm very Riley, independent. Riley's 17. Why is Riley <laughs> living alone? That's why I was concerned. But okay. <laughs> Riley, her parents, and my boyfriend, Cole, 18 male, came after midnight to help me take my belongings to their car and drive me to Riley's house. My parents woke up in the middle of this and asked me what the hell was going on. I kind of shrugged and told them that I was moving out before they could kick me out. My parents tried to deny this and attempted to stop me from leaving, but there was nothing that they could do since I was a legal adult. By the way, I wasn't just going to leave in the middle of the night without any goodbye. I already put a note on the kitchen table where my mom goes to first thing in the morning explaining what happened. Right now, I'm at Riley's house in the spare bedroom and I've gotten bombarded with calls from my parents asking me to come back and not to tell my grandparents about this. Oh. In one text, my mom called me an ungrateful bitch for leaving in the middle of the night and that she should have kicked me out sooner. Whoa. Am I the asshole? So they were going to kick her out. <laughs> they were. Ooh. Yeah, because yeah. I think at the beginning, I was like, "You're kind of an asshole for doing it in the middle of the night." Like, <laughs> you should tell them, like, even if the, if this is a thing, they're going to kick you out. You should tell them, like, "Hey, this is the day I'm leaving. I'm going and leaving in the middle of the day like a normal person." It seems like shady. You're doing this on purpose to make a statement by doing it in the middle of the night when they're asleep. But then that last sentence, yeah, 
switched it for me. <laughs> because <laughs> they're bad people. The mom is a villain. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, yeah, it definitely sounds like if she would have been more upfront about it, the mom would have been like, "No, you can just leave now." Yeah. In a way, so it's like, yes, again, where it's like leaving at in, in the middle of the night is very dramatic. That's why I'm like, it's so dramatic. That's why I'm like, I don't give you that. But a- she obviously knew more about her family than we did because she made the right call. It seems like. It reminds me of those like uh, those Disney shows, like they're sneaking out in the middle of the night and they're just like doing some heinous thing, like running away. Mm-hmm. They got like the little <laughs> stick with a handkerchief. No, they're climbing down. They're, they're, they're glass. They're, they got uh, the bedroom thing. Yeah. Gra- grass ladder wall. Yeah. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> I've um, always wanted to run away. The knapsack with the really? twig. Yeah. You never wanted to run away. I did once. But then I thought about it. Like, okay, that's that's another thing. <laughs> I feel like the response of the parents, I don't know, like at least coming from my persuasion. <laughs> um, I'm 18. I am 25. You're 25? 25. And I'm... St- I've been the, calling you guys young. Never mind. You guys are old as <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> what does that mean? I thought y'all were young. I don't think y'all 22, 23. Nah, just youthful spirit. Youthful spirit. Youthful look, uh, you know? But, um... You look good. <laughs> thank you. The, uh... Oh, shoot. I almost lost it. I almost Maddie lost it. No, it's, coming back. <laughs> it's just a thing. Maddie looked at me so weird, so... No, it's like... It wasn't even like my cousin's hot thing. It was more like, you guys look really good for your age. You guys I didn't look, look that way. You guys do look good for your age. At 25, the rifle age of 25, like, even though I can do stuff as an adult, my parents are like, don't do it. I'm like, how oh, that trauma of how I was raised. I don't care. I'm an adult, but I'm going to listen to what they yeah. say. I don't know. But it's like, she's like, yeah, I'm an adult. They can't do anything. It's like, if they were to say something to me, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, y'all just come back tomorrow. Let me rethink this. <laughs> but I mean, in a way, you guys are lucky in a way that oh, you, yeah. might, you might not realize just because oh, no, you, I both, you both live with your parents now mm-hmm. and they're allowing you to do it and they're not putting too much expectations on you. Now, a lot of people don't right. have that. Right. So you guys have a different perspective. Very supportive mm-hmm. parents. Yeah. Well, well, thankfully, they have. she has some type of support yeah. like with her friends, boyfriend. Okay, Riley. Okay, Riley. Okay. Riley's parents. Okay. Yeah. Was it Cody? I didn't know they said that. Wait, wait, I thought it was just Riley. And okay, friend. potentially the grandparents. Okay, yeah, grandparents. The, yeah, the, yeah. They said don't tell is, my mom and dad. Is there an update? No. Oh no! I need At to know. the time of filming, this was six days ago. I need to know the play out of the grandparents. I gotta know what happened. I gotta know what happened. I mean, even you describing what you said earlier about how we're just we're lucky to be in our position, and I recognize that because people that are different. In a, in a different position than me, they had to grow up faster than me. So the fact that she's 18, already thinking about, okay, where am I going to live at least right now for, you know, the period of time before college and then if I get a dorm. But it's like even even me when I was thinking about doing that, I chose to go to community college because I didn't want to go into debt because college is so expensive. Right. So I'm like, she might have to do that or I mean – she can always do what I think is the smarter route, which is taking a longer time in college. So you have time to like work either a full time job, part time job, whatever you can do, because depending on what course you're in, the Girl. course load is yeah. a lot. But she's growing up really fast. And it just seems like it would suck to be in a position where I'm thinking in the back of my mind, my parents are going to kick me out any moment. Right. Because even um, my brother he knew somebody that his his friend that happened when his with his friend the moment his friend turned 18 and graduated high school his parents were like no we're, you're getting out of the house and i wouldn't say he's necessarily he's better for it no oh, I, no i would say <laughs> that he's not necessarily worse off but it's not like he's way further ahead because he had to learn this hard life lesson of now you take care of yourself yeah cuz i think about it when it comes to wanting your best for your kids and your future like family. Right. Why wouldn't you let your kids have, if they, if, if you can, if you have that relationship, why wouldn't you let your kids have that boundary of like, yes, take as much time as you need to lean back on us until you can go off on your own and support yourself. 
so that you have like a head start in a way compared to some kids where they're like, okay, you're 18 years old. You might have not even had a job or you were working at like fast food, retail, something. Yeah. Now you have to worry about going to school, getting a job, supporting yourself, paying all your bills. If you have a car, get a car, pay for your car. All this insurance you need to worry about. That's way too much for a teenager. Yeah. 18, you might be an adult, but you're still a teenager. That's crazy. Yeah, that's the one thing I, I, I don't understand about people that have that standpoint of once they're 18, kick them out. Because it's like, Max, you just got out of high school. The max you were probably used to working is a part-time job. So to have that, just that shock of like, okay, I was in school basically full time. Then I would go to my part time job and maybe work it on the weekends to like, no, I have to get a full time job. And these are all the responsibilities I have to pay for at 18. When did I grad? How old was I? I think I was I graduated young. How old were you when you graduated? You were 18. 12, right? I graduated when I was 18. <laughs> Child prodigy right yeah, here. Yeah, child prodigy. Graduated when He's I was 12. A smart guy. <laughs> I graduated when I was 18 and then I went to college. I turned 19 in October. So. Because I think. Wait, okay. So if you were 18, I just oh, turned. Oh, so you seven. were oldie. What are you talking about? You turned, so you graduated when you were you 17. You turned 19 then. The, like right after you graduated? Yeah. Yeah, that's an oldie. I'm not an oldie. Yeah. You graduate high school when you're 18, and then within that no, next I period of time, when I was 17. Okay, well you're a little so youngie. I was a youngie. You were you're a youngie. Oldie. <laughs> it's okay. Some of us got to be old. Some of us got to be. Or you can be just the right age. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because within the school year of 2017 to 2000, well 2016 to 2017, guess what? I turned 19. People grow up. Okay, Sam. And that's when I started college. Okay, Sam. Yeah. And some people later in life start. Is this college. what happens when you get older? You just get sensitive about your <laughs> yeah. age. Oh, a thousand percent. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. And you guys are not even old. So that's what, that's what I'm, I'm like, I was 18 I was and 19 is old, not old. <laughs> no. I'm talking to the old heads. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I was 17 then, but yeah. I had just turned 17. So it was like I kind of graduated. I you guess on the youngie. I was on the younger <laughs> side. I was on the younger <laughs> side of things. But like, I don't know. I couldn't even imagine like even being put in that position. It's like, bro, I don't, I got two years after that. Yeah. So like for someone that does like graduate on time or a little later, it's like, bro, they have maybe five months before they figure it out. Yeah. Or if she was unlucky enough to graduate at 18, and then just like, oh, walk the stage. Yeah. Now get out of the house. <laughs> You're walking off the stage into, they're handing your bags. And they're like, that's, that's for You're you. taking a picture you, with your like, suitcase. I guess. You walk off the stage into you haul yeah. <laughs> It's like, dang, that's so wild. That's, I don't understand how you could think that's okay. But Well, I think it's, it, it depends on, it's just how people approach families. Yeah. Because some parents are like, Maybe they didn't plan for it, or maybe they just don't have the financial means at a certain time. They're like, this is going to be a burden lifted off of me. Like, I might have, I might still have kids, and I I couldn't afford all y'all. Now there's one leaving. I, you're, old, you're old enough for me to leave, and you can get out so it can relieve a burden on us. Yeah. But then there's other people like Maddie saying, like, no, I'm trying to give my kids a leg up. So I'm trying to give them as much of a head start as possible so you can stay here as long as you can. Mm -hmm. Then there's like a middle ground like, yeah, you can stay here, but you got to start paying bills. You got to start paying rent. Like there's like all that. But it's it's all how the parents approach what they think family is. I feel like in a way when you push your kids out too early. Well, also to your thing. I'm not a parent yet, but that hurts even thinking about that where I'm like, I'm like, OK, I can't afford you anymore. So now take care of yourself. No, I brought you into this world. So as long as you need help to a certain extent, to a certain extent, I'm going to be like, yes, I'm going to still provide for your needs, even if you're 18 years old. Like, I, I think that's a valid mindset to have. I just don't think there are a lot of people who did not plan to have it, to plan to bring you into the world. Either and way. Even if, even if they plan to bring you in the world, they didn't plan on what that actually means right. of how much True. that actually comes into. So when they get to like, 
dang, I was not <laughs> ready for this. And I'm still not ready. 18 years into it, I'm still not ready to like Oh, continue yeah, this. yeah, yeah. So, so I'm like, like it's not, I don't think it's perfect. I'm like, I don't think the parents like actually, some parents probably feel bad. They're like, I need to kick you out and I feel bad and then they have to live with that. I think there's a whole wide amount of reasons. But I think your mindset's perfect. Like, yeah, in the perfect world, I should be able to be here for my kid whenever they need me, mm -hmm. as long as they need me until... I'm old and you better take care of me. Right, because I pay it forward, buddy. Pay it forward, bud. Or at yeah. least do it progressively. Like, I think that's one thing my parents did. Like, after a while, they're like, we're not buying you any more clothes. And it was like when I, <laughs> I when I first got my first job. Is that why you just sit here naked? Yeah. Every time we come in, we have, we to, have to throw, like, throw clothes, clothes at you. you. Yeah, because... You know, I've been rocking this since middle oh school. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> These pants have been with me for 18 years. 18 years. <laughs> 18 years. years. It's like it, I come in late and Sam's literally in the bathroom telling me, like, Maddie, he was naked again today. <laughs> again. And I'm like. I had to go to Walmart and buy him clothes again. Look, look you know. But then every time I come, Aunt Denise is, like, taking the bag. She's like, what is this? And I'm like, nothing. And she's like, what's in here? She opens it. She's like. Sets it on fire. I'm like, in front of me. She's like, if this is for Brandon, no. Brandon doesn't buy clothes, so I know he has $500, so he can give it to you. Like this, like next, this story. next story. Am I the asshole for not sending my husband $500? I feel like this is that scenario where the dude had the Uber driver. No, the taxi driver and didn't spend it because he's like, no, we'll walk. Even yeah. though she was like drugged. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you always have to send your husband five hundred dollars. I think that's like in the wedding vows. Am I the asshole for not sending my husband five hundred dollars? I apologize in advance for this being so long. It's not really that long. <laughs> my husband, fifty nine, and I, fifty three, have been together for ten years, married for eight. My kids and I started staying with him around three months after we met. He was behind on all of his bills, and I ended up taking over all the household expenses except for the mortgage, which was five hundred and fifty dollars a month. I had a decent career and could Jeez. almost afford to do this, but I did lose my small house because I couldn't afford to keep it and mm -hmm. pay the other expenses as well. When we got married, he filed a quick claim, legally adding me to his property deed. Last year, he was offered a job two states away. The kids were grown and moved out, so I resigned my position. We sold the house, and we have been living in a travel trailer in campgrounds in our new state. We used the proceeds from the sale to buy two decent used vehicles. The older model camper we live in and put the rest into a savings account in my name because no bank will give him an account due to his past banking history. That's <laughs> <Dang laughs> an account. Not even like a crypt, just an account to put his money in. That's the, bad. the plan was to use this to buy property in our new state when we find what we want. I found a new job making much less than my previous and net around $700 every two weeks. His hourly is two and a half times mine. He still pays no living expenses, and I've had to use a bit of our savings each month to keep everything paid, let alone mm. rent being $800. He has recently started his fourth job since we moved. A month after getting his third job, he told me he was looking for a new one and that they let him go. He had nothing lined up, and he's gone six weeks with no paycheck. I put fuel in his truck and bought him tobacco and, of course, kept the bills paid. Friday morning, I was leaving to visit my kids in our home state. After leaving for work, he texted me and told me to leave him $100 and that he would pay me Monday. I don't carry much cash. Knowing at most he only needed fuel for 30 miles to work Monday morning, I left the 15 I had and headed out. About halfway there, I got another text message saying they were holding his first check and I needed to give him $500 for the week. He got very angry when I did not turn around and go back to give him cash that I didn't have. He told me to stay the fuck up there. When mm. I got to our home state, I sent him $175 of my $200 in my checking account via Western Union because it was an instant transfer versus three to four days from a bank account. He called and cussed me out, saying it wasn't enough to get him through the week. Even though he's only working three days due to a holiday, he again demanded that I send him $500. I said 190 should be plenty for that. He again told me not to bother coming back. He said that since I blew $500 over Labor Day for my share of the airfare, hotel, and rental car to travel with my two oldest children, 32 and 30, to attend an unexpected funeral of their father, I owe him that much from savings. 
Am I the asshole for refusing to send him more than he could possibly need and almost as much as I bring home in two weeks, knowing he isn't paying any bills? I'm so confused. You're with him? Why? Yeah. What kind of relationship? It seems like they're roommates that are not even roommates. Roommate, at least roommates. Car mates <laughs> or mobile home mates. At least car mobile home mates pay rent. He yeah, ain't even doing he's that. He's making more, but he's not contributing. Is that something you would be okay with? Kind of always taking care of your partner for the rest of your life? No. Because. No. <laughs> I would not be okay with that. I get where if it's like a period of time. Yeah. But it's like, okay, I've been supporting you. And it's also dependent on like, you know, do I have the, am I the only one working in the family? Are you working in different ways? Yeah. But if you guys both have a job and I think, didn't she say he makes two and a half times more yeah. than her? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I So where's this man's by. money? So what's two and a half times more? Just, it, what is that like? Almost $2,500, maybe 2,100. Uh, well, no, that's three. Probably like 2,000. Ish. Well, twenty one hundred is three times more. Yeah. Two and a half times more. What is that like? Seventeen hundred. Up there, yeah. Seventeen hundred every two weeks. And where's your seventeen hundred? And she's paying all of the bills. And she makes less. That's literally what we talked about last week, or you know, when, when one of the stories ago when we're like, why? It might have been during our Thanksgiving episode a few months ago, but it was, why is it eighty twenty, and you guys are paying fifty fifty? Remember when the, oh, the boyfriend yeah, yeah. was like, let's yeah. do 50 50. Yeah. But like the fact that she's digging in the savings to pay bills when mm -hmm. he has money. And that broke my heart. He, he, he has money. So is he just using it for his stuff or whatever he wants to do? It definitely seems like. So the top comment, I didn't screenshot it because I wanted to screenshot where she actually responded. But the top comment just basically says like, yeah, he's financially abusing you and he's been doing it ever since you guys got oh, together. Yeah. Mm hmm thousand percent because yes that is something that i would want in a partner of course where it's like i'm willing to pay your bills for the right now but i don't and i don't know how old the kids were eight years eight years they've been together and it's still like this you're complete you're completely dependent on somebody else but yeah no the the fact that he makes two and a half times more that's what makes me mad because i'm like and she's pulling from savings yeah yeah. That broke my heart. That hurts. She had all this st stuff before him. She had a house before him. She had to sell it for him. I don't I just don't know why she's doing all this stuff for him and not seeing the red flags. It's like what you're saying. You you put this story out in black and white. I'm wondering what she sees reading this back. Yeah. Like what is what's the appeal of the relationship? Because yeah. there has to be something that it's making it worth it for her because that seemed there was nothing good about that mm -mm. at all. That was all bad. And then when you get like together with somebody, they're supposed to uplift you. Like you guys are supposed to go to like a new level. Yeah. And you, for better terms, downgraded. Oh. Because it's like you literally had a house, had everything established, had to move out of the house. You had to sell your house because you couldn't afford it. Also paying his. Paying off his loans. Yeah. You just picked up a financial burden yeah. and you were okay with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and she was also being a rock star too because she was seemingly taking care of her kids, being able to support them with her house that she had. Right. So it's like, yeah, like you're saying, you should come in. There's, okay, there's more, there's double income. Right. Where's the income? That's from the goal because I'm like, if you cannot, if you cannot take care of yourself. Yeah. And we join together, like. That's a, that's something that's like actually a deal, not a deal breaker, but it is kind of a deal breaker. Kinda, I'm like, yeah. If I see you and you you don't even have the ability to take care of yourself, I know you're gonna drag me down because I'm I expect a certain level of like, I don't need you to be rich, but I need you to be able to be self sustainable. And if you can't right. do that, when am I getting a relationship for you? You could look so cute or you could be fine, but what does that matter? It's yeah, it's a hundred percent a deal breaker. Yeah. <laughs> He's not even kind of. It's 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 up there, but okay. I can't say too much because you know that I've only had one other dating experience besides Maddie. But it's like we were locked in, like we were friends for like so long 
that we had had so many like deep conversations just about like the future and life and all that. Yeah. So it was like, I'm almost wondering too, like, how did he get, like, I don't know. You've been on a lot of dates. Is there like a, <laughs> and you're going to be on one pretty soon here. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> bringing it back in. <laughs> I start crying. <laughs> I have been on one. Because I know like, you didn't mean it like that, but yeah. if Sam was an insecure man, he'd be like, well, so what are you trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been on a few. <laughs> I've been around the block, baby. A couple you didn't times. Have to, you didn't have to say that like yeah, that, yeah, no, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, 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 okay. My bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what you trying to say? Okay, is there ever like a point where like you stop asking like the, I guess, honeymoon phase questions of the date and you're like really poking at, okay, if I want to see myself with this person, this is a question I need to answer. Do you, is there ever a point where you kind of start asking those like consistently or is it just like a one or like if they come, they come type thing? Um, did, did that question make sense? Like, are you saying you start with like the fluffy questions, but then as you get a certain point in your dating history, you're like, OK, I'm going to start with the harder questions. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm going to start with oh. do you take care of yourself? Oh. What do you see? with the bill situation where do you see yourself in seven years instead of like so what's your favorite color yeah no i think that comes with age because definitely in my 20s i wasn't asking any of those questions and then it would filter out once we dated for a while you're like oh we should ask some questions but also in my 20s i didn't care that much right you weren't looking for anything serious yeah yeah to a certain extent yeah to a certain extent like I i was never like dang i'm just trying to be out here but i'm like I, I just wanted to date someone and have a girlfriend and we'll just date and we'll be fine. And then whatever happens, happens. I wasn't thinking of the future. Now when I'm dating, I am thinking about the future. But you don't, you also don't lead with those questions. Yeah. But w- once you establish something, you're like, okay, I kind of like, I kind of <laughs> see something. That's when I'm like, okay, blah, 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 blah. Those kinds of questions. Even though I do think dating apps kind of help make that better. Mm-hmm. That's like one of the few things that I think dating apps are actually better at in having those things up front. Like, these are the things that I'm like, like, yes, I'm looking for kids. Yes, I'm looking for this kind of thing. It's like criteria. And if you read it, you have a good idea of what their what their vibe is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There still needs to be more questions had that go along with the financial stuff and all that stuff. But I think that comes later. You don't come on your first date like, are you broke? <laughs> You a broke boy? Are you broke or are you not broke? Are you going to put me in a trailer? Yeah. (laughs) No. But is it also, do you think it's also like wired to the person? Because me personally, like I could meet someone. I like just meet somebody and have a deep conversation with them as if I've known them for so long. Like, like for me, it's never like, like just like in any, like just friends or anything. Like I'm like, I'm never like. Oh, what's your favorite color? <laughs> so my friends, I don't even know their favorite color just because that's how we started off. Like I was like, so like, what do you like? Where to do you do? see yourself in five years? Yeah, like what do you like yeah. to do? Or like what do you? What First are your question. hobbies? Or like that's how I start off. Like I don't, I don't like fluff. I do think that's a personality thing because I'm I connect with people. I'm like, I connect with people in bits. So I'm like, if someone gets my humor and is going along with me. Then I always, now, before therapy, I was just, it was all bits. It wasn't anything <laughs> deeper than that. Then when I went to therapy, I was like, oh, use bits to like push people away and like not talk about anything. So I still do bits, but then I'll, it helps me get into deeper things. So I'm like, if I can connect someone at this silly, dumb level, I can get deeper into it. But I'm never like leading like, blah, blah, blah. What, who are you? What's your what, political party? Are, yeah, who are you as a like, person? Whoa. But yeah. I do know people where I'm like, Oh yeah, they're they're very good at doing that in a way that's genuine and it feels nice. Mm-hmm. But usually, I'm like, I do not. If you're coming at me like that and you're not silly, jokey, jokey, silly, silly boy, girl. <laughs> if you're not silly, silly, then it's like it's hard for me to connect with someone who's just like serious coming at me. Yeah, like I mean, to my credit, I do it in a joking tone. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm bubbly, uh, you know. But it's like, but it's it's also the the situation because like we all been on cruises. I've had the deepest conversations with strangers on a cruise. I've never like I saw them on the cruise. I've never I've never talked to them again. But we've had you just get in a hot tub and you're just talking to them. You're like, 
I know everything about you. I know about your your husband. I know about your kids who are acting up, and we're just having deep conversations. So I there are moods, there are vibes where I'm like, yeah, we just be talking. Mm-hmm. I feel like cruises are different because you can get personal because you're like, I know I'm never gonna see you again, so I can tell you about my cousin that gets on my nerves, and I'll give you all the details. Because yeah. guess what? They're not here, and I know you exactly. don't know them. A guy told me about his divorce and one of the part <laughs> and like we saw each other like three times. We talked like an hour each time. Yeah. I saw him while we were going, I'm like, hey. He was like, He's like, oh. He's like, because <laughs> he's with his wife <laughs> and it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Literally just aired me. I'm like, oh my God. You're like, okay. I see how it's That's so we're cool. cruise friends. That's exactly what it is. And I'm like, I'm actually okay with it. I do like that. Am I the asshole for splitting the bill at dinner and not letting my boyfriend pretend he paid? How big is that Wait, to y'all's ego? Um, I don't think so. This one, no, no, because this one's from four days ago. Okay. Am I the asshole for splitting the bill at dinner and not letting my boyfriend pretend that he paid? I, 24 female, have been dating Ben, 26 male, for eight months. For context, Ben and I are in different income brackets and Ben has expressed that he sometimes feels a little bit weird about this because he's a gentleman at heart, but he says it's hard to treat me since I'm not really impressed by his gestures. I've said many times that I'm not concerned about these kinds of things either, but it comes up periodically. Last night, Ben and I went to dinner with six of my friends. There were three men in total and five women. At the end of dinner, the two guys, Max and Harry, said that they would get the bill, as the guys usually do when we're out. Ben quietly said to me that he wasn't really comfortable with the guys paying for his dinner, so I said that I'd chip in with the bill. Ben said thank you, but he could chip in, and then I could just pay him back afterwards because he didn't really want them to know that I was paying. This struck me as totally absurd because firstly, it's an unnecessary step. Second, even splitting the cost was something I wasn't sure he could realistically be able to cover. And third, I felt like he was trying to enter a pissing contest with my friends, which was just childish. I said no, that I would just pay, and then turned to everyone and said that I chip in on the third of the bill. No one batted an eye, but Ben was sulking. He's now mad at me, saying that I emasculated him and made him look bad in front of my friends. I think he's over-dramatizing it because my friends couldn't care less, and he needs to get over himself. Am I in the wrong for not letting him save face? But is that emasculating to you guys? Um, no. I think... (laughs) <laughs> well, the fact that he even brought it up, like this was a suggestion that he made. He has like a he doesn't have a lot of confidence in his masculinity at all because I wouldn't even brought that. I'm like, yeah, what does it matter? You could pay. I'm always actively trying not to pay for things. So <laughs> anyone's like, yeah, I got this. <laughs> Good are you? <ya. laughs> Thank you, sir. You want me to shake your hand? You want me to do anything? I'll do anything for you. <laughs> so <laughs> I I don't I don't think Anyone who thinks that their masculinity is tied in the ability to like pay for things That's or what I was... do all that is, I think you need to look at what masculinity is, I think. Bruh, like, why does money have to do anything with how you are as a man? Yeah. <laughs> like, that, I, I don't know. I want Sam's page. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me none. I'm like, I mean, money is just money. It's expendable. You're going to get more. You're mm-hmm. going to get less. You're... If nobody cared to, it's just like, bro, what are you, what, you're putting yourself in that box. Yeah. And I mean, she was spot on too. It definitely was like a pissing contest because yeah. it's like, okay, he doesn't make as much money as her. He's going out with her friends. So if anything, if, if that was me and Brandon, I'm thinking it's a treat because he's not bringing, she, he's not bringing me to a restaurant he knows I can't afford and yeah. expects me to pay for it. Right. And she even said that at the end, she's like, I don't think he can cover even ho- his own bill. That was never even a thing I was even thinking about. So she was like, whether they were going to cover it or I was going to help cover it, he wasn't ever going to have to worry about that. Well, I guess that's the only part where, so they go to this expensive restaurant. And for me, I'm not emasculated by other people paying for me. If they offer so that they're going to pay for me, but I would never go in assuming that. So I would go in assuming that. I'm looking at the menu and like, okay, so the salad is ten dollars, and I'm looking at the cheapest thing because <laughs> I'm expecting to pay for myself, yeah. right? Uh, 
But the part where he loses me is where they like, oh, yeah, we're going to pay for it. And then that's when he steps up. He's like, oh, he's, hey. Oh, yeah, yeah. But then he's still not paying for it. No. She's paying for it. But you want me to. I'm like, that's where I'm like, that's way too much. That's too You're complicated. Doing too much. Have you guys seen the broke boyfriend trope on TikTok? Yeah. The white boy. Is it the dude with the ponytail? The, yeah. 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 Kind of dirty looking it. hair. I'm he but he plays a broke boyfriend trope so well. And he would what's totally broke, do this. What's the broke boyfriend trope? Like never holding a job, always <laughs> oh, wow. all, like, like going to the store and be like, babe, can I like use your car? So and then I'll like give it back to you. But like, don't no. let him see you, babe. Wait, wait, wait. No, you know, <laughs> he did it on uh, National uh, Girlfriend's Day, I guess. Uh -huh. He's like, he's like, I took you to Dollar Tree and you can pick out anything you want. Can I use your card though? <laughs> He's like, and I'll just I'll just pay for it and then give you your card back. But it's natural. I'm treating you. Yeah. It was so funny. And then he also was like making a joke about like the broke boyfriend having like a pose. So like <laughs> at the grocery store, he's like, can I use your car, babe, to like swipe it? But they're at the self checkout and, you know, she's swiping and he's like behind her, like on her. Like yeah. as she's like swiping, he's oh, like, I love that you, That is such a pose. And then, like, he, like, swipes it after. He's like, thanks, babe. And I think one of the first things I saw was a video of every single day he comes, you know, she comes home from work POV. And he's like, uh, you know, hey, like, first day at the job today. I think it's going to go well. Mm -hmm. Second day. I don't know. It's kind of shit. I probably won't last long. I'll probably start looking for something else. Next day. Yeah, babe. Like, they told me to leave. So I did. <laughs> So day after that, no, I didn't go in today, babe. It was just a bunch of bullshit. So I'll just let it be. And then I think the latest one I saw, oh, what was the latest one I saw? I Him playing video games. Yeah, I remember that one too. Cause he's like, he said, he said, I mean, it's just a nine to five anyway. Like the corporate <laughs> system is just trying to screw us over and make us work to death. He's like, that's why I'm about to do the stream and stuff and really take off with it. Yeah. <laughs> So he does a whole trope online, but it's great. this reads Broke Boyfriends. Mm -hmm. Because yes, two different brackets, but it's the way that the moment the other men stepped up, you're like, oh, I need to pay. I gotta pay. And you whisper in her ear like, Let me, can I use your Yeah, call? yeah. Like, I'll swipe, but you pay me back. No. no. That's where it's like Broke Boyfriend. Not necessarily the different incomes. It's that behavior yeah. right there. That mindset. You're trying to prove something. And then... Ugh, the even the grossest he's he's upset afterwards when she was like, No, I'll just pay for it. And yeah. he's like, Babe, you embarrassed me. Get over yourself. You embarrassed yourself by asking. <laughs> yeah. That was embarrassing. You that was really embarrassing to listen to. By not looking at the menu and picking I'm, the thing you can yeah, afford. I'm embarrassed for him. Yeah. I that was a good point because you know, especially like times when you know money was a little rough mm -hmm. but it was like my friends be like hey we're going out for this or that and it's like all right i'm gonna go but i need to be completely mindful of what i'm getting yeah and it's just like it's just crazy to me that people don't think that way because well like, we all have friends who just go knowing they ain't got money <laughs> and they just like i've never been in that and it surprises where, me because yeah, i'm like, like how can you live like how that? could you yeah. even go there's like going expecting and there's like so I'll get the, are we doing appetizers? You're like, we're okay. splitting, right? Yeah, we're we're splitting. Doing, and then like, oh, so I don't, I'm like, how could you even be like this? I would be sweating bullets the entire time just waiting for that bill to come. And there's like carefree, happy. I don't get that mindset at all. Like at that point, you shouldn't even eat. You don't get to eat. Yeah. Like this next story. I've seen it and it's, oh, nice. I mean, I do have a question. Yeah. Um, so I think we all agree that it was, it's like money is not tied to masculinity. Like seeing your girlfriend pay for you is not bad. No, I'd be getting happy. But have you <laughs> ever, like or is it, I just want to know if it's just me or if this is other people. Do you still feel some type of way when you see it happen? I was at the store and I saw like, it's kind of that broke boyfriend thing where it's like, there's a woman and there's a man and the 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 man just like gabbing talking to he's talking to the cashier and he's just like oh yeah and then the woman's like quiet and she just pulls out the card and pays and there's something in my head even though i'm like that's fine that doesn't matter i'm like this dude's a scammer there's i don't know why i think that it could be completely fine like she could be paying for it this time he paid for it next time. but it doesn't matter i'm like when i see that i'm like why is she paying for it? Why is he paying for it? And I know it's just like a weird societal thing that's in my head every time I see it. 
I definitely feel like I've seen that too, but I think it's just traditional. I think it is where it's, it is like a tradi- kind of more like, in my opinion, like a toxic traditional view. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's like more, Oh, like you are being demasculated. Like it is. De- what is the, what was she trying to say? Emasculating. It is emasculating to have your girl pay for you. Yeah. It's like, it's not, um, but if you're that sensitive over it, then yeah, you can just pay for whatever you want. Pay for me all the time. But I do think it is still very prevalent in our society. I mean, with the Andrew Tates, like there was a lot of people that believed in that man. And even like I'll randomly scroll on like a YouTube video on something and I'll just still see there's like a still a lot of toxic masculinity a lot. So even though it might not run in our circles nearly as much or people are um, trying to grow out of it or just naturally with being around us over time, it changes I think it's still very much abundant. I think I got desensitized to it being a cashier because mm-hmm. it's just like you see so many people in so many different, different situations. Types of people, yeah. Yeah. So it's just like, I don't know, like seeing this woman paying the guys just right there or like he's loading up the groceries. I'm like, they either have something completely like figured out mm-hmm. or she's just paying for Like, I don't know. It just, it never really occurs to me at all. But, I also think yeah, because in my head, you guys going through that whole broke boyfriend. That's what exactly what I'm thinking. I'm like, because mm. <laughs> it's usually also like a level of attraction between them. It's like sometimes the woman's less attractive than the man. You're like, so what's happening? What yeah, are you doing? I uh, and not okay. even less attractive, but just like. There's a difference where you're like, maybe he takes care of himself a lot yeah, more. And yeah. there's like something where she's just like kind of there. Yeah. I, there's been a few times where I'll see like some, like a woman driving a man and like, but it's like a, in a beat down car mm-hmm. and something. So I guess to an extent, that's the only time it kind of kicks in. It's like, okay, I wonder what that situation's about. Like, why are you? Yeah. Y'all should, I don't know. That's why it's like so weird. It's like these, these dumb gender roles that like, are just in, I'm going to speak for me, it's in my head where I'm like, I know this is dumb, but I'm like, I still think it every time I see it. Yeah. But I think now that I, like, I actively call it out, I'm like, yeah, this is dumb. It does change how I see it, but I'm like, it'll still, first thing will pop up. Am I the asshole for telling my friend's boyfriend that he shouldn't have been allowed to eat? Some friends and I decided to do the trend where we have dinner and everyone brings a food that starts with the first letter of their name. There is one (laughs) friend of ours that's a bit of a moocher. Whenever we go out, she never pays for stuff. Mm. Whenever it's the dinner bill, <clears throat> tickets for the movie, etc., we always end up paying for her. But everyone accepted this and doesn't really have an issue with it. However, recently, it's become worse. She's been dating this guy for a couple of months, and she brings him everywhere with her, even when he's not invited. <laughs> so now we have two people to pay for. Absolutely Oh, not. they both are on the same page? Also, I feel like I have to say they have jobs. They're not struggling. It'd be different if they were broke. And then, of course, I wouldn't mind. But yeah, we had this dinner party last night and everybody brought food and put a lot of effort into it. These two, however, showed up with absolutely nothing. No, they didn't. Not even a bottle of soda. Criminal. We were annoyed, but nobody said anything. It wasn't until the end of the night when they were leaving that I cracked a little. The friend's boyfriend was taking home all of the barbecue ribs that were left. I repeat, all of them. And it was a lot. Like, damn, be considerate at least. He emptied the entire tray of ribs into a container. (laughs) The audacity. That's when I politely asked, can you not take all of it? The others might want some too. He got all defensive and said, why are you treating me like I'm stealing all the food? I I clarified that I never said such a thing and that I only asked that he didn't take all of it. He got angry, plopped the ribs back and said, fine, I don't need your food. To which I replied, I mean, it kind of seems like you do. And to be honest, (laughs) you shouldn't have eaten at all since you didn't contribute again as usual. Then my friend came, took him and just left without saying anything. Now, apparently, she's angry with us, mainly me. Most of my friend group doesn't think I did anything wrong, but there are a couple who are saying that I shouldn't have said anything. The thing is, I didn't even say anything to my friend because I don't mind that she doesn't contribute. Her boyfriend was the one that was irritating me. He eats the most food but doesn't contribute, drinks the most alcohol but doesn't contribute, 
orders really expensive meals at restaurants doesn't contribute towards the bill. I guess I kind of just got annoyed and snapped at him. I tried phoning her to clarify that I don't have any issues with her, but she's ignoring me. I don't know. Maybe I should have left well enough alone. How are you letting your friend slide? I would never. With you paying for her food all the time. A grown person? With a job? With a job? Nah, I'm, because now I'm not even really mad at the friend. I'm mad at the friend group for allowing this to continue. Yeah. Because if someone's just going to say, yes, I'll pay for you all the time, then she's actually sane. The The friend who's taking advantage of all this is sane. Who would want to pay for it? You're saying, you, I don't have to do anything. And you guys are happy with it. And you're just moving on and like, blah, blah, blah. You can pay for it. Of course she's going to take advantage of that. The boyfriend is another story. <laughs> Unless the the friend was like, they just pay for everything. We ain't got to. He's like, really, babe? He's like, yeah. Bonnie and Clyde. My friends just Are love you, but me. But still taking all of the ribs. That's a, yeah. that's but that's like over time where he's like, they're used to getting everything. So he's like, everything's mine. I ain't got to pay for anything. That's just his mentality getting bigger and bigger. I'm, I think he is a jerk. That's crazy what he's doing. But I'm like, friend group. Yeah. Have respect for yourself. Yeah. If you ain't got no meal, don't come in the party. Yeah. I, do you oh. think our friend group would have did that? Like, okay. How many times would it take for you to pay for something before y'all said something? I think, uh, no, I mean, it depends no, it on each person, but probably like maybe the first time and then you would have been corrected in private by whoever had to pay for you. The second time it's like, okay. Third time you're not invited <laughs> anymore. Yeah. People just don't invite you. Actually, I yeah, I don't I don't think it would have slid even the first time because I remember when we went to um you would have kind of been called out, but as a joke, but for real. No, no, not even as a joke because when we went to Colorado, it was hey, we was talking heavy about that money. We were like, all Actually, right, so this is how well, we split this that's up. Different. Well, now we're talking about the money. There is something <laughs> because the girl sent me money for the last grocery shopping thing. Oh, but two boys did it. And since I was the, not the boy, I got a paid. There's two other boys <laughs> that didn't pay. How much did we owe you? I paid. It, it was, was like, like 60 or $70. No, not that one. It was like 11 or 13. Oh, it was like the last thing we got. It was like a $60 thing. It was like $11 each. And I get an email from SJ. I get a notification from Maddie. And I'm just like, hey, the girls are quick with it. Yeah, I was like. I don't see my cousin. I don't see Steph. How much was it? I gotta look it up. But I think the friend group is actually the problem. The one who allowed the friend to do it. Because I think you're right where she she is in some way being like, oh yeah, they don't. Just watch. She's telling him, you don't have to pay for anything. I just go. Because yeah, I guess that reaction isn't necessarily just a out of the blue reaction. That's a learned reaction. Because you say that's sane for the friend to do. Mm -hmm. I still think that's a huge it's selfish. dick move it's for so the selfish. friend to do where it's like they know that their friends are either nice enough or pushovers to be like, mm -hmm. oh, no, don't like you're our friend. So you're mm -hmm. using the fact that I love you and I care about you as a way to get a free meal. I don't necessarily want to pay for you. You have money to pay, but I'm not going to like stand up for myself and be like, where's your card? Where's your card? Because you right. got those expensive Brussels sprouts. So are you going to pull your card out or, you know. That do the dishes. Yeah. And no, but I totally get the rage that OP's talking about with the boyfriend. Because I'm like. <sighs> to take all the ribs is so, well, not, well, so entitled. Not even that, but just in general, you're a random person coming in <laughs> just here. Just some guy. I'm paying for you. No. Yeah, no, that would have never yeah, happened. Yeah. If anything, that would have been the moment where I'm like, nah, screw this girl too. It would have been the moment I learned a to have a backbone. Percent, I would have said screw her right then. Yeah. I'm like, your boyfriend's not joining this money train. Yeah, separate checks. This is what I bought and this is what I ate. So thank you. Yep. No, no. You know what they need to do? What? The next time we hear from OP, we, it needs to be on Petty Revenge. They go out to a restaurant. They pay. They order their stuff. Each and every one of them in the fin group already gets their bill. Like quietly, like. Okay, every time the waiter comes by, you or you pay for your stuff, you pay for your stuff, you pay for your stuff. And then when the bill comes for the last two, because they're going to be the only two on there, let it play out. And they're like, okay, so how are we splitting this bill? And they're like, oh, that's all yours. Yeah. 
This is just like my favorite story we did with the was it the sister who were like, oh, I forgot my card. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, I have it. This card? Yeah, this card. Is this your card? <laughs> this one. This Throw card that I have. Cuts or slice. <laughs> ah! It's the sharpest the plastic. It's just like. We should act this one out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to be who? So, what are we? have three characters or what? I'll be the rip. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> he always wants to. I'll be the short stack of ribs. <laughs> I'll be the alcohol. <laughs> I'll be the boyfriend. We'll be the entitled friend. You be OP. Okay. You know, fill in anybody else. Ready? Yeah. Hey, this party. <laughs> Crazy. Yes. <sighs> I those ribs are really good. So good. I think we're gonna go though. Jump. So are oh, you guys gonna is leave? The, is the party winding down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, um, I don't manage jumping. Dang, it's a lot of ribs. Um, hey, you got any Tupperware? Oh, yeah, I know the what, party's really cool. I'm glad I brought. Wait, what did I bring? Hey, what are you? Um, oh, I forgot. I didn't bring anything. You. What's your name again? Tyler. Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, Terry. Uh, I just want to know. You know, I said Tyler. Oh, my bad, Trey. Uh, I just want to know. You have some barbecue sauce. What are you doing with all my ribs? Do we have barbecue sauce? Let me just go in the fridge. Okay, there's. I'll just take this whole container. Okay. Okay. Enough. Enough. What are you doing with the ribs? Just taking the leftovers. The, you said the party's running down. Yeah, it, it's running down, but <gasps> look how many ribs you got. You think I'll you take that first trip. That? Oh. That's gotta, a lot of ribs. Uh, you taking all the ribs? Yeah, we're going to have it. Right, babe? We're going to have it. Yeah, we're going to freeze those. Yeah. We'll probably eat those for the next what six months. What did you bring? We brought our sparkling personality, hey! right, babe? Hey! Hey! Party. hey! Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. So I'm going to tell you what you're not going to do. You're not gonna leave all these ribs because you didn't bring none. Like, what do you? What is running through your mind right now, Tyler? Why are you getting all bent out of shape over this? I'm just taking the Tyler leftovers. karaoke. Let's go. Merry Christmas, ribs. Oh, yeah, dude, yeah, dude, yeah, dude, yeah, ho, ribs, baby. I'm Tyler. Santa's a I'm ho, ho, ho. Oh, hey, hey, wait. Hey. Uh, but you're not oh. taking them ribs, ribs, ribs. Oh, oh. yeah. Uh. Yeah, you better leave, 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 actually. Oh, wow. Without Whoa. ribs. Oh, my Whoa. gosh, OP. Merry Christmas. OP. Hey, that boy. Take Whoa. these. I didn't want these ribs anyway. You don't deserve mm. them. Ooh, that's good. Actually, yeah. Put them in my pocket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's in fact, good. It looked like Who you need this? them. Jerry, you the made way these? you just the way you just these picked them good. all up, it looked like you need them. I got money. You sure I'm about that? Another. Yeah, I got money. Are you sure about yeah. that? Yeah. You want to check? Pick the bone clean. I mean, I, I, look. Do you want to check the the split? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, no, like, we're gonna go. Do you want to check? I'll write you a check for the ribs. Yeah. No, babe, I got this. Okay. Cash at me. No, let me write you a check. No, no, babe, Who's that's my check? checkbook. It's pink. Why do you have that? Um. Yeah, I'll cash app you. Please, free. No. Yeah, I'll, just do it right now. Yeah, we can, you can do yeah. it before you leave. I, here, Babe, I'll hold the Babe, give me ribs. my phone back. Babe, hey, I'm just. Oh, I'm sorry. Not, yeah. Sorry. Shh. Smell like broken here. No, I'm fine. Don't yeah. say that about Tyler Trey John. Okay. Babe, I said don't ever say my middle name to anyone out there. You know I'm embarrassed by that. The I scammer. <laughs> What? Tyler Trey. No, Trey John. Oh, okay. okay. I thought it was John Trey. He's got two middle okay. names. Is it John Trey? Babe. Wait, is that? Babe. So y'all been running this whole Bonnie and Clyde. I'm going to need y'all to get up out. I'm going to need y'all to go. Yo, no, y'all got to stay. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> give me the ribs. Is this what you're going to do? Yeah. Give me. Put, put them in a... Here's a hey, look over here, thing. so you can realize the severity of the situation yeah. as well. This is what y'all going put the ribs in the container. Y'all gonna shoot me over ribs? I'll shoot you for anything. In front of my broke husband up at. I ain't got nothing to lose. I am broke. We all. Broke. I am broke. Put it in. You robbing? You're not robbing. And put that applesauce too. You know I want that. <laughs> yeah. 
and put those cinnamon roll pancakes in We're there. We're in a trailer park right now. This is not, now. I don't want the blueberry lemon ones, the cinnamon roll Throw ones. them away. You hurt her. <sighs> Throw them away. They're nasty. Look. Look, we can work something out. We is going to work. We're going to run this. I know and we're going to be back next time for some more. I know more. you guys are like looking, living out of the trailer park. I know she... <laughs> Mine's a water oh. gun. I got you. Uh, I got you, girl. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did. Uh, oh, I'm you know, calling the police. Oh, oh, let's go. <laughs> oh, that... W- Babe, I thought you said it was a water gun. I was so... It was just a joke like hers. It was like, squirt, squirt. I'm so... Okay, grab the ribs. Babe, babe, get the ribs. Babe. You shot no, me. No, no, I, I shot. Babe. Babe. Actually, I can use your checkbook now. Okay. And scene. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to babysit my kids like this next story? <laughs> Stupid. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> We're working our way through this episode, I swear. I shot. Oh my God. <laughs> Over some ribs. <laughs> oh my God. Why did you give me a real gun? <laughs> Am I the asshole for eating at the children's house that I babysit for? No. no I think that isn't that a perk of babysitting? Yeah. yeah. Nanny. Am I the asshole for eating at the children's house that I babysit for? I, 20 female, babysit for some extra cash on the side. This just happened and it's eating me up, so here we go. So, the family (laughs) ordered pizza for dinner. Mom left cash on the table for me to pay. It was me and the two boys, 7 and 10, large cheese pizza and breadsticks. I've always been under the impression that the babysitter is allowed to have a reasonable amount of dinner if they're expected to serve dinner. I've babysat a few times in the past and have never encountered this. When the parents came home to relieve me, they asked me how tonight went. I said fine and said the pizza place was really good as I'd never ordered from there before. Mom looked at me puzzled and asked why I ate the kids dinner. And I said, oh, I just had two pieces of pizza and a breadstick. I feel it was an appropriate amount to eat. However, the parents disagreed. Dad said that they didn't expect to have to feed me dinner as well and told me not to eat their family food. Overall, I'm very uncomfortable and confused by this. Both boys were fed and didn't complain about being hungry for the rest of the night. I personally have always assumed, perhaps wrongly, that if I'm expected to serve dinner as a sitter, that I'm welcome to have a serving. Is this something anyone else has experienced? Am I the asshole? Babysitters? Babysitters? I've only babysat like family. So. I babysat once. So it's a different thing. (laughs) I can eat whatever my family has. It doesn't matter. I babysat once and then um, I had her come home from work early because I got sick. And so I was like, I can't take care of your child. But when I first got there. You ate Pop-Tarts. You ate their (laughs) Pop-Tarts. No, she actually showed me the kitchen and she was like, whatever, you know, you know, she wants to get. But also you're welcome to anything in the kitchen. This is different, but I've dog sat multiple times before and I've house sat and they're like, for, I'm at different places, and they're like, "Yeah, the, whatever food is in there, you can have whatever you want." It's Some usually they don't pack they don't pack sitting? the house because they're leaving yeah. for a week. But whatever is left over, they're like, "You can have some." Usually, I don't get it because I'm like, "You're like eating their All share. right, this is You're great." Like <laughs> You're like, <laughs> <laughs> no, usually I get food and then I I like buy food for the week or whatever. Oh, okay. But like it'll be like eggs left over or milk. You know, I've never seen that for a house sitting. Really? Yeah. What do you mean? eating their food oh yeah i mean because the babysitting kind of makes sense and that's when i hear the story because of things like where they're saying like oh yeah here's the kitchen Mm -hmm. you can have anything like usually they'll say that just they show you where everything is like like, you can say that but if these parents didn't say that i could see why they would get mad because they didn't say it but i don't think it's weird that you ate the pizza no. Because getting a large pizza for a seven-year-old and a 10-year-old. And a 10-year-old. And then just what? I guess they wanted the leftovers. They're like, they were ready to get home and like, we'll eat the leftovers. After you guys probably just went on a date where you ate. Yeah, that's what I'm like. That's the weird thing to me because a large pizza, of course, I'm going to eat a slice. Or you just watch the kid, you're hungry. And the kids are like, so good. <laughs> like, I wish I could eat some. Well, okay, so whenever you guys eventually do have kids and you think about getting a babysitter, what side are you on? Are you like, you can eat whatever you want, yeah, eat whatever the dinner is, or it's like, don't touch the food? 
What if there's a thing I've been thinking about? I'm like, I've been waiting to get home to think, eat that food. Well, is it That's enough? That's the one the babysitter ate. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't say anything because you're like, oh, yeah, you can eat anything. I'm like, I don't know. Well, I, mean, I, I guess I can explicitly say don't eat that yeah, of yeah. thin mint frozen cookies in the freezer. That half of a sandwich in there. I wouldn't eat that. I licked that earlier. <laughs> oh, you, you tried um, to dissuade them from it. I coughed on it too. Ugh. It's probably really gross, so you probably want to leave it. Like cooties. Uh, you just come home and it's gone. I'm like, <laughs> they explicitly ate it. They're and like, the wife's just walking. Wife's just walking. <laughs> yeah, so it's an I was great. I'm like, where'd you get that sandwich? Where did you find that? <laughs> where did you find that? Because I licked that earlier. She's like, yeah, me too. And licks it and walks away. Classic husband and wife. No, to we me, it seems that. like these parents are like cheap parents. Yeah. These are cheap parents. <laughs> and by me and you, I mean you would be. <laughs> Am I the <laughs> asshole for drinking on my designated driver nights? Yes. Yes. You had a responsibility. Absolutely. Me and my friend group of close friends go out to drink reasonably often, and we always take turns being DD in a rotation of sorts. The issue for me is that I'm heavily visually impaired to the point where I can't and never will be able to legally drive, even using bioptics or other assistive tech. Instead, on my nights, I pay for an Uber or a taxi for all of us, which others have said is a completely acceptable option for them. The problem comes up with me drinking on my nights. Even though I'm not actually driving and can't reasonably be expected to, one of my friends expressed that it's not fair that I get to drink on my nights when everyone else holds back on their nights. In my view, it's not unfair at all. If anyone else wanted to drink on their own night, they're more than welcome to pay for an Uber the way that I do every single time on my night. They just usually choose not to. Am I the asshole? I'm not an alcoholic and am more than fine going through an event or outing without drinking or anything, but I don't see the point in holding back when I reasonably could have one. Wait, what? Why couldn't they drive again? Because they can't see legally. Oh, they can't see? Like, they can't see well enough to drive. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is, like, a sketch from, like, only a comedian could make up. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, He's just even the evening the playing field. Like, if you get drunk, you can Uber too. Like, yeah, there's nothing. To you're mad at me yet. because I'm visually impaired, <laughs> and I'm able to. I don't know, like that. I don't know. That just, I think it's silly. Seem, yeah, it's it doesn't seem silly. right. <laughs> it's only a that is joke material. Yeah, bro, no, I can't up. see. <laughs> <laughs> can I drink a little bit of when I? Do you want to reenact I, this one afterwards? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't see. Yeah, I mean, I think it's I, I I don't know why they're complaining. Like they might not be taking one for the team by not have you know not drinking so they can drive everyone home, but they are taking one for the team because they're pay paying right. for everybody to get right. home. I think that's a fair trade off. I mean, when it's like you can't necessarily be completely fair because it's like I could drive you home, but I don't think that's safe for anybody. <laughs> But I could try. I you might as well be, be drunk if I'm driving. <laughs> yeah, I could be your DD. Yeah, I might as well be drunk and blind. Yeah. <laughs> Me being blind is basically being drunk. So, yeah, I mean, I could do it, but. But there are some people out here, like, who need things to be exactly fair. Like, everything has to be, we're all doing the exact same thing, not accounting for any other differences in situations. I feel like this is what that person is. They're like, yeah. We all have to be the same and everything. I'm like, if if the same outcome is happening, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Yeah. I think I can be that way sometimes, but when oh. those things are explained to me, it's easier for me to understand. But I feel like I can be a stickler for the rules like that sometimes. But also, it's not like I won't bend to yeah. if your the understanding. Blind. Yeah. I'm like... <laughs> if your friend's blind and doesn't want to drive yeah i might at first be like okay this is my first time meeting you so why are you drinking on d and then you yeah, explain to yeah. me I'm like okay okay that makes sense that's my bad yeah but i'm not gonna be mad afterwards you know you're like wait why aren't you wait look at me why aren't you driving huh? what <laughs> like <laughs> it's like i'm again? looking i'm looking at you I but do. i'm not making eye contact. Yeah. Like, excuse me you're rude. Can you look at me in the eyes when I'm talking to you? Okay, all right. So we're going to send off this episode by doing another reenactment. I call Uber driver. Dang it. Yes. So there's only Maybe two other people. He wants to be the car, of course. You can't be. 
I'll be <laughs> I'll be blind person. <laughs> okay. Legally blind person. I'm ready. Hi, I have a Uber for Jason. Yep, I ordered that uh, just for my friends, and okay. we're all drunk. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! I this is Uber X. How many people do you have? Because mm. like you can't get in the front seat. We have five. One, two. Mm. I only have space for four. One, two, yeah, three. That's me. Okay, okay, that's you. This is me. Okay, one more. This is you. That's me. And then one more. And this is John and Lucy. Okay, four. We got four. We got four total. Okay, I just don't want to get reported. If you have four, you we guys do. can come. We do. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. Wait. Hold on. You count. Okay. So we got my friend. Hold up. Let's get in the line. Yeah. Okay. Single file. Single file. Single file. And then the hey, Uber yellow driver. shirt. You're not in line. Can you see or what? Wait. Where's the? It's over here. <laughs> okay. It's wait. It's, can he really okay. not see? Yeah. Okay. I'm he in can line. or can't? He can't. He can't. Okay. So I'm legally blind. Oh my god. I'm sorry. That? I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm one. legally blind. Okay. That's everybody. Everybody. Put doing. your put your number in the air. Okay. I'm one. I'm 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 the line leader. So then he's pretty sober for a drunk guy. I'd say. <laughs> Wait. Are we doing it in order of the line we're in? Yeah. Forget it. Okay. Get in the Wait, car. Can we see how many? Okay. Okay. We got four. We're, we're getting in. We're getting in. We're All getting. Right. Oh, 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 hey, oh, hey, hey, oh, hey, hey, hey. in. Yeah. Do you guys mind um, J-Lo? Yeah, uh, throw that on Ox. You about to put that on Ox? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But I'm from, I'm from, from Jenny from, from the, the block. block. Hey, used to know a little. You. Now, wait, used to have yeah, a little. Me. Now I have a lot. Sorry. Is I this am. okay if I use a karaoke mic? Yeah. yeah. I don't have a stereo. Oh, so you're, <laughs> you're I'm like, this version does sound differently. Yeah, I. You guys celebrate Thanksgiving? Yeah. Can I get to the yams? Sweet yams. Show me the way. Cause I got bills to pay. Man, you're a fun Uber driver. You got yeah. all the hits. Yeah. Listen, listen. There's some water. Sorry. I've been meaning to pick a bone with you, though. This Uber driver is very tall. Yeah, she. <laughs> talks a lot yeah. but i'm like maybe it's just me this yeah. is the perception at the time maybe I, we just had more sorry <laughs> my phone <laughs> but like you can't see right you know that about me you yeah. love that about me i can't see and I'm oh drunk. my gosh i'm drunk and, and that's my see. problem so wait me being blind is your problem well not that in particular because it's my problem too i wish i could see I, bro wish you that's kind of messed too. up what yeah. you said you think you heard that uber driver i heard right? that and i had to stop wait let me cook i'm not even looking at the road anymore uh, uber okay <laughs> i'm sorry but that Look, was shocking okay, yeah, you're right. he was supposed to be driving right. today but he can't because i'm like a blind. knee driver so actually i don't need to Someone like this Uber. I'm really scared. So like, I feel like I should have drove on. Yo, you probably, we probably would have been better yeah. for it. Oh my god! Which is why I'm saying, like, yeah. you know, it's your DD night. Yeah, it is. And so I why aren't you sober? Uber. So my DD night, I'm sober. I'm sober as a kite. Yeah, and I thank you for your service. Yeah, but I can't. Perfect see. job. Man. You can't see. So, but you, it's like you know, could. Maybe you're just stretching it because you're drunk. Maybe if you were able to be sober, you would be able to wow, see. Wow, you are a different person when you're drunk. Oh, I am. Yeah, it's a truth serum, isn't it? It's no, truth that's serum. my bad. Oh my god. Oh, Uber, weigh in on the. Sorry, that, sorry, that was <laughs> that was random. Wait, was that you or? Did, are you wait, soundboarding this? No, she has Ooh. her family on Facetime. <laughs> They're watching this. They're booing. I us. guess we got to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, stop! Stop! Listen. <laughs> they just heard you say that you don't like him because he's blind. I didn't That's say that. That's all I heard. No. Guys, I'm going to put him on mute. Why are they so all sorry. in the room? Yeah, why, why are they all the... watch? This is the strangest. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we at? Yeah. <laughs> this is... Oh, my God. We've been at a red light for a while now. Sorry. Okay, don't get mad at me. This is not the overdriver. This is not the overdriver. Who is this woman? I don't know. They're still there. They're texting you had me, like, one where... job. <laughs> I'm blind. I can't. Yeah, yeah, if you were sober too, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Wait, can I get to the yams? Oh, there's a red light. Yeah. 
Hey, 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 hey. Why are you running in the car? Because I have child lock on. We were so drunk, I thought we were out. Yeah, I thought we were like spinning. Oh I thought this was a God. roller coaster ride. Um, you guys see that lake over there? Yeah. You see how the there's a bridge? Yeah. But there's construction. Yeah, right. Because the, there's, no there's no more bridge. <laughs> you should have been sober. There's no more you bridge been there. Sober. No, I just, <laughs> no, this is all me. This is all your fault. This is all your fault. <laughs> and that was a fear test. What? You were just on Beyond Scared Street. Oh my God! Are we floating in the? This car is right a show. That's a green screen. We haven't even a movie. <laughs> You've been pranked. How drunk what? are we? <laughs> so tonight we talked about the dangers Wait, of how, being too drunk. Who's the studio audience and, here? <laughs> where are we? And hey, going out. I, I did not say what, <laughs> what I said earlier. Guys, please, please stop. Oh my this God. Is, this is dangerous to be this way, and it's even more dangerous to have a friend who hates you for being display. blind. Someone, if you had us. a friend who hated you for being There's, blind, what would you do? <laughs> There's kids I'm here. I'm John Quinones. John, we, what, what, what would, would you, you do? do? <laughs> what is <laughs> happening? <laughs> and you have an audience now. Good for you. You stepped Good, up yeah, in the game. Yeah, that's that's great. I love your show, no, John. Yeah, I don't know how you, we got here. I'm scared. I don't want to talk to you. Okay. Oh, no, that's because your home. friend can't even see. Yeah, no, that's He probably fair. thinks I look like a woman. That's fair. I do. Because <laughs> I'm John Quinones. I thought you'd been J-Lo this whole time. <laughs> the way she was singing them. No, yeah, no. I'm like, J wait, John, you were the driver? <laughs> I'm, I'm not John. I'm oh, freaking it out. It just keeps happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's that, that you're Patrick Star now. <laughs> from the, the and now, welcome to To Catch a Predator. What is oh, what is this? Wait. What is wait, this? Who's a predator in this scenario? In the back of this trunk, Did oh, we, ever go we to the have bar? a man what is happening? who is trying to meet his girlfriend who was babysitting, and he tried to do it by tricking her. He delivered her a large cheese pizza and breadsticks. Oh, oh my gosh. But she shut the door in his face before he could know. Wait, do we have anything to do with this? Did we did. You have I, to catch this next know. week we still with our new air? live audience. We're still suspended oh. in the air. Blind man and his hater friend. Wow. Wait, are we trapped here? Wait. We'll wait, see you guys we, wait, next week. John, do we at least get pizza? On what would you do to catch a predator? Can we eat the pizza if we order it? Wait, John, are you John? Who are you? As I leave you, I have to ask you a question. What are you willing to do to catch a predator? Would you? Are you willing to risk not ever going back to your lives? No, <laughs> no. I mean, when you put it like that, it's hard to say no. But I don't want to do. As that. we play the American Squid Games. Wait, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, please let me. I have a family. And I see. I, I got bills. <laughs> it's just too much the audience is like we yeah. we went out a long can time I ago can i get to the yams um can i get to the yams thank you everybody for joining us thank you brandon maddie thank you we talked we had some discussions right we cry but i cut that out all the tears that we <laughs> cried it's a lot. and i just want everybody in the comments to know that i am nice just like brandon is he's my cousin Everyone knows Maddie's evil, <laughs> um, but I am trying to get hey. like Brandon. So make sure you tune in next time next week for our redemption story to recover from what we just did in that last <laughs> skit. That was bad. Because we need the audience back. We and do we need lost you guys. It with that last we love skit. you guys. We need you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.